Hello, everybody. Good morning. If you are on this side of the world, good evening, good afternoon. If you're on the other side of the world, and if you are tuning in live right now, I'd love to say hello. Be sure to write a little comment in the chat box wherever you are watching so that we know you're here and we can you can join us in the conversation today. As you know, this every month, I come, I, jo I bring in some special guests where we talk all about music and singing and all things performing arts. And today we have something super special lined up for all of you today. Hello, I see some people tuning in here live. Let us know you're here. Let us give us a little thumbs up or a little chat in the in chat box so we can greet you and welcome you. All right, if you want to learn something, you read about it. If you wanna understand something, write about it. If you wanna master something, teach it. Now this is a quote from the yoga guru and spiritual teacher, Yogi Bhajan, and it certainly carries a lot of truth, right? Now in this month's Singers Connect expert series, you've got not one, not two, but three vocal coaches hanging out with you today. My two guests are Kelly Jackie and Sam Lau, two very talented singer-songwriters who started out as our vocal students and have now become our vocal coaches. Kelly, Jackie, and Sam will be sharing their experiences and life lessons from performing and teaching, and of course, answering any questions you might have for them. Our goal here is to get you to do more of what you love, and if that happens to be singing, then you are definitely in the right place. For those of you tuning in for the first time, my name is Crystal Diaz. I'm a singer, vocal coach, and co-founder of the Christine Sanson Music Academy, as well as the Online Vocal Academy. The Online Vocal Academy was created to help people who love singing popular songs, but feel they may have missed their chance for a life in music. Our Singers Connect membership is a unique interactive learning experience that's designed to get you back into singing again. Whether you're doing it for the first time or you're, you're jumping back into it again after a long hiatus. As a Singers Connect member, you get to develop a captivating voice. You get to sing all your favorite songs with confidence and hang out with fellow music lovers without commuting anywhere, just by singing for 10 to 15 minutes a day. Yes, that's really all it takes. Now, if the thought of singing solo in front of other people makes you feel a little weak in the knees, then I invite you to download your guide to rocking your first solo song. Inside this free guide, I've outlined five key action steps that will be helpful for a beginner who's never sung in front of anyone before, as well as for someone who wants to up-level their solo singing skills. Now, these five action steps that I take you through in this guide can dramatically improve your solo performances and help you feel a lot more confident about and prepared about performing in front of other people. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Head over to rockyoursolo.com to download your free guide after this interview or click the link in this description where you're watching this episode. All right, one of my guests today is Kelly Jackie, a singer, songwriter, MC, and TV host whose career began at the age of 16 when she wrote her first hit song, He Invites Me to Disneyland, Ta Ya Ma Her Dixile. That song quickly became a hit and was selected as one of the theme songs for the opening of the Hong Kong Disneyland. My other guest today is Sam Lau, a singer, songwriter, guitarist, and music producer who's worked with many of Hong Kong's top recording artists. Sam graduated from the Australian Institute of Music and launched his career as an artist when he competed on Hong Kong's version of The Voice and finished as a top six finalist. That is actually how Sam and I met. <laughs> Both Kelly, Jackie, and Sam are our vocal students turned vocal coaches at the Christine Sampson Music Academy, and it is our absolute pleasure, pleasure to have them on our team. So welcoming them to this episode today, welcome Kelly, Jackie, and welcome Sam. Hi, Hi. everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad we get to do this today. I've been wanting to yeah. do this for a while. Yeah. All right, this is the first time that I've actually had two guests on at the same time. Okay. And I would not be more thrilled to be doing this with both of you today. So I deliberately made the topic of today's interview quite open-ended because you know we, the topic of the interview is on music singing and teaching kind of open-ended 
Mm. I did that on purpose because both of you are artists and teachers, but your experiences are so varied and your music, the music you create is actually quite different too. So instead of asking each of you individual questions, I wanted to ask you both the same questions and then have you just share your perspectives and your thoughts with us. Would that be okay? Sounds good. (laughs) All right. Awesome. I love it. Um, All right. So it's raining out here. You guys, is it thundering where you are, by the way? Uh, (laughs) No? No, actually. It's quite sunny. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's sunny and uh, a little bit of raindrops now. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. Because I, I moved, I moved a little bit further away on the island, and I'm okay. right at the tip of Hong Kong Island. Okay. And I get all the weather, right? And yeah. The weather changes, I get it. So as I was talking, there's like thundering happening, and I was like, "Wow, it's really thundering." I love thunder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love raindrops yeah, too. I love I nature think, sound. Yeah. yeah I, me too. Me too. Yeah. I was like, is it just me, or is it you guys? Anyway, anyway, I guess it's just me. <laughs> you're sunny where you are, KJ, and you're part of Hong Kong. All right. My first question for you both. Um, yeah. let's, you know, we'll start with, with Sam. You can answer this first. Did you consciously choose to have a career in music or did it happen quite spontaneously? Sam, how was it? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, because I actually choose to leave business school when I was in uh, uni to study music. Yeah. So that part of it, yes. But uh, I wasn't exactly planning for a uh, uh, a full music career just want to see uh, uh how it goes like because i really enjoy music and i love making music and then when i came back to hong kong and then um yeah that was my first job i'm uh, uh, uh i just got into uh the singing competition um uh yeah the voice and that's how how me and crystal met and then um and then i was like signed up with uh that company and then ever since then i just uh started working in the music industry in hong kong so that was my first job and then and then i started teaching music and um yeah i know we we, ever since we met sam i feel like we've just been you've just been part of our lives and i love that yes (laughs) yes Um, and for those of you who, who don't know, I was uh, one of the co- voice coaches on the TV show, and um, I, they had three different voice coaches on that season of Voice in mm. Hong Kong, and I was one of the coaches, and each coach had 10, 10 singers that they were kind of teaching and training, and Sam was one of those 10 that I was... Uh, I was one of I the was lucky working. one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he did really, really well, you know? Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> KJ... How about you? Yeah. Did you consciously choose a career in music or did it happen for you quite spontaneously? I would say it happens just quite spontaneously. Because actually when I was young, I planned to become a like, social worker or a teacher. Oh, you are a teacher <laughs> like, now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very amazing. I think because I, I like to talk with children. So my, I just like, oh, if my future I carry can be like, Working with kids, it will be great. But uh, yeah. when I was like having my, um, like at 16, uh, when I have my HKC exam back in Hong Kong, then I start to create some songs and I just put it online. And that amazingly makes me enter this Hong Kong entertaining business. So it's a very amazing moment for me. So that was actually quite spontaneous. I want to talk a little bit more about that, KJ, for you. I know that you wrote, that's the song that became, that basically shot you to fame, right? Yeah. Um, That that song that you wrote. You wrote it during your exams. Was that a stress relief for you? Is that why you wrote the song? And tell us a little bit about that. Okay, I wrote that song, He Dates Me to Disneyland. Uh, Actually, I just think of the song name at first. I just like the song name. Uh. And then... I create the music when I just done my exam, uh, I practiced, and then I just really need that stress relief. And then I just go to the piano and just play some music and record that, and that turns out to become a song. And at first, I didn't plan to do anything for that. I just wanted to uh, give that song to my grandma as a uh, Mother's Day gift. Yeah, so it's kind of like a very twisting point after I assign a name to that song and I hand it to my uh, friends online to create uh, the other parts like the arrangements and the lyrics and at last uh, really record that and put it online. 
You know what I love about this is that for both you, uh, Sam and KJ, it seems that your entr entrance into music kind of came somewhat spontaneously through a couple of decisions that you made. You know, for oh, Sam, yes. you, you wanted to just be more creative and then you switched your major and then you entered a comp competition and then it just yeah. flowed from there, right? Yeah. Just a couple of decisions and same thing with KJ. You know, it's not like you really were thinking my 10 year plan is going yep. to be this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I felt like uh, definitely music uh, picked me. Yeah. Well, when I first mm -hmm. came back, I've like uh, not much of a plan and everything just came to me. Even when I entered the competition, it wasn't like really exactly me uh, 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 looking for the competition. It was the producer who came to me to ask to see, oh, if you want to join the competition, we're looking for like someone who plays the guitar. If you're interested and stuff, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, before that, I never like um, uh, uh, even seen the show or anything. I don't even watch the TV, uh, so uh, so that, that that was cool. And then and then and then I, I met you, and uh, and then yeah, the rest is like uh, history. Yeah. Do you think both of you were well prepared for a career in music, or do you, or were there things about the music industry that really surprised you and that you were not prepared for? Sam, I oh, no, KJ, why don't you start first? Because I made okay. Sam go first last time. <laughs> okay, I would say I I've been love singing since I was two. I always sing along. I go on stage to perform in front of my family, <laughs> but. Uh, and then I entered choir uh, since I was six, and I joined the um, choir and the Chinese orchestra at secondary school. So that's what I enjoy in my music life at teenage. And so I just love singing, but I didn't really have a big plan of like entering any entertaining business because I know in Hong Kong entertaining business, they really have a different point of view about music. And they have different criteria for you to enter that business. Like you have to be pretty, you have to be very talented, you have to be slim. Oh, and back then yeah. I was quite chubby <laughs> 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 when I was in it. So I, I, maybe that's why the confidence thing is one thing which me, let me put down my dream of like entering as a singer. So oh, that's really sweet. a big shift for me when I uh, went at 16. I have that shift to enter this business. It's such a big dream for me. So it's very amazing. I think that's why I will have that attitude. Whatever you like or you really love, just do it. Don't really need to put those blocking in front of you. You never know what yeah. happens in life. That's like a box of, box of chocolate. <laughs> mm. right? uh, you never know. <laughs> but you just From keep on holding. Down. Yeah, like You just keep on holding what you love. And I think you will have your own path towards your dream. That's what I think of. I love that. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. That's a great that's a great share. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's true. And you know it's interesting yeah. that you said about the Hong Kong music industry and that, you know, there's a lot of criteria there that you have to look a certain way, you have to behave a certain way, you have to have a certain yeah. kind of music and um and that there's there's so many blocks already there, you know, that to block ourselves on top of that. I think it's it makes it even harder for ourselves, right? <laughs> it is a very very competitive and tough industry to be in, that's for sure. Sam, is there? Do you feel you were well prepared for a career in music, or were there things about the industry that mm. surprised you that you weren't ready for? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of things that surprised me, and also um, uh, yes, I when I first came back, definitely I don't feel like I was well prepared. Yeah, but right now I do feel I'm hundred and ten percent prepared. It's been working all those years and learning from the experience. So uh, why I didn't feel like I was well prepared because um, yeah, uh, when I first came back, I felt like um, uh, a lot lot of my technical stuff, like such as uh, my singing technique, um, uh, it, even even like my songwriting, uh, my guitar technique, uh, it, it wasn't at its best level. Yeah, so uh, I, I, but I think, yeah, that's part of the uh, process. Yeah, uh, I think God have a special plan for me to come back and then uh, I have to meet you, like Crystal and the Christine Sampson family. So, uh, therefore, like you guys help me uh, really open up um, uh, my voice. Yeah, and then now I'm like singing um, with a lot of confidence. Definitely, I felt like at my best. Yeah, and also uh, all these years, um, yeah, I've just been sharpening my uh, my techniques and stuff, 
and and uh yeah even even my guitar and stuff like i'm trying to make it like more interesting because i find that when i came back oh um yeah just it's a very competitive market and then number two is uh um there are a lot of criteria especially um things that i might like say uh this type of style i'll have to like uh, uh um change it change it a bit because it might not suit uh this market so those are the stuff that i wasn't expecting even like the length of song like um usually when i write a lot of song it's kind of like uh along with a, a guitar intro and all those stuff but when i first came back i realized everywhere i went to um they they always just like try to like just cut off all those instrumental stuff so for me it took me a, a, a quite a while to like get used to yeah when i have to like really shorten a lot of song that i perform and stuff oh yeah and then also when i first um doing uh started doing a lot of live show and stuff um yeah then i realized like um uh i wasn't able to sing uh songs that i really want to say uh yeah usually a lot of the shows they pick songs for you or have like a bunch of songs and yes uh a lot of the time like i i get kind of like sick of those songs <laughs> yeah so, so how do you manage things, that yeah. in terms of um you know when you have to sing songs that you don't want to sing at all, um it's not even a get it's it's not even a choice like you have to sing these songs then yeah eventually do you, do you just yeah. have to figure it out do you just have to learn to like it or you just kind of do it and then hopefully you can sing a, a song, one one or two songs that you do want to do how do you manage that uh for me i uh, i definitely learned to uh love it for me it's like uh, uh just just practice i mean um it's still music i still get to play and um um yeah every every second every minute i get to play music and uh it, it's it's just for me it's a blessing because yeah, i'm getting better at um that craft yeah singing guitar uh, performing yeah so even if i don't like that song i'm like mm, it's still a good deal i still get to uh sing and uh, uh uh yeah just to learn a new song i love that but, i think it's yeah. so true because we sometimes i always encourage students to sing songs that uh, for a particular reason and sometimes they you know people like to sing song i, I often say that you, there's lessons in everything mm. there's lessons in anything there's a song yes you yes you lessons really in like. everything guaranteed yeah. you're gonna learn something oh yeah so how about you, yeah KJ? do you get do you have to sing songs you like i don't want to sing it but i guess i will <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes because of different uh shows sometimes for weddings sometimes for celebrations there you have to manage different kind of songs and you have to think of the theme what you need to sing it and you need to check the lyrics as well mm. you know you you can sing a breakup song in a wedding right yeah that, that's what i heard <laughs> once when i joined a wedding though with the singer uh, or something like that it's, uh, uh, but yeah and apart from that is sometimes because there's a lot of songs but through those chose uh the choice from the um, team or the the host i always learn a lot because i never think that i can sing those songs but oh well other people trust that you can sing those songs and what i can do is just practice and try to break my limit that's what mm. i learned and not just i think that's what as an entertainer or even a performer we need to keep on improve in improve through different kind of fields and different challenges we have the courage yeah. to take okay just say yes and <laughs> what we need to I do is just practice that's so true that as i think that's part of being creative. Um, and, you know, let me know what you, you think about this. But I think sometimes when we encounter things that could be a challenge, actually, there's an opportunity mm. to learn and to be creative. And that's how we get outside of, outside of our comfort zone. It's yeah. what we don't want is to always everything be so easy and just like yeah. formulaic, right? Then we're not really yeah. learning and growing. Yeah. Just go okay. out of our comfort zone. I, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what do you, what could you share? What has been the highlight or most memorable experience of your career so far? Sam, I'm going to throw this to you first. Oh, most memorable, <laughs> most memorable. Um, definitely. I think for me, the last, the last show on the voice where I sang, uh, you raised me up. Yeah. I that was most that. memorable because I felt like that was the only time I was singing with a voice that, um, I, I I like yeah that was after like I uh, I had like uh, three or four months of lesson uh, with you <laughs> yeah and um and and I was singing in a, a, a different voice yeah so yeah. 
and then I'm like, I like that voice. Yeah. You did, you did really, really well. I totally remember that. Um, when you said that, I was like, I remember that. I remember that image in my mind yeah. at every single show. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so, that. um, that, that was memorable because, uh, um, for me, I felt like, um, it, it's like a click. It's like, yeah, that moment I'm like, yeah, I really, uh, my voice started to open and, and I'm enjoying my new voice. Yeah. I think it's so interesting that you said that because it's true. When we learn how to sing, sometimes students, it just clicks. It's yeah. not like sometimes they're practicing. I don't know if I'm improving. I don't know what I'm improving. And then all of a sudden, boom, they're able to hit a note. Oh, yeah. They're able to yeah. sound like something. Like, I never knew I could sing like that. And it just clicks. I like how you said that. Yeah. And it's just kind of align and click. And sometimes during that process, you don't know if you're improving, but then all of a sudden, you know, it kind of happens. Yeah. KJ, what about you? What is your, has been your most memorable of experience of your career so far? I would say it would be uh, a solo concert of mine, like I can, like a few years ago. It's my favorite. I thought it was going to be singing with Kelly Chen. Of course, that is one, but there is a lot. If, but, but apart from that, because I always say in my interview, there's a very memorable stuff. But for my highlight, I would be because that concert is actually the whole idea is come from me, like what songs to sing and what kind of uh, background and stuff. So it's a very it. great show to represent who I am after um, entering this business for quite a lot of years and it's a very good um, experience to work with different parts and even though the uh, venue is not really uh, can be suited for a lot of audience but I like that cozy and like everyone who see how I enter the business and be along with me through my business or or came to the show and that is very touching and memorable moments for me. Yeah, that's like it's being part of your journey, right? And sharing yeah. who you are with other people. And I think that's what's why we sing and that's why we perform. Mm. It's that connection, mm. it's that journey and that sharing and that, um, yeah, knowing that the songs that you've written, the songs that you've sung and performances actually have an impact on the listeners as well. And then they become part of your story uh, as well. Um, I do love that. I want to ask, I want to shift a little bit here to you, your life your career as vocal coaches or teach music teachers and vocal coaches here is there a difference between kelly jackie sam the performers mm. and kelly jackie sam the teachers or do you feel you're pretty much the same person whether you're on stage or whether you're teaching uh and kelly kelly jackie i'm gonna go throw that to you first <laughs> um i will say at first it will be a shift for me because being a performer there's a lot of things you need to plan before you go on stage and for teachers the planning is a little slightly different though although they both way? need to plan tell, tell in us what, tell way? what way you can you i have to write a lot of notes when i am a teacher <laughs> like need to juggle on a lot of things like the lesson plan how to like the structure of the lessons because it's the very first few times for me to teach, right? But when you go on stage, that's only three minutes. You can't plan a lot of stuff. You just boom and go. <laughs> but for now, I would say I'm pretty like uh, pretty much the same, like uh, because I just be me, like what I want to share and I, how I feel with my my students. They are like one of my audience, or, or I'm their audience somehow because they have their own thoughts of music or that goes in singing path. So I, I'm, I feel like I'm just a partner or a guide to like be next to them and help them to solve the problems or try to encourage each other. I would say not just I'm teaching them sometimes even kids. I when they sing their enjoyments, their facial expressions really encourage me back somehow. Like, oh, oh wow, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely. That's, how you really truly enjoy music you can see from the face the shiny eyes that's that's something they sparkles me back so yeah that, i like love that absolutely thing. i love yeah. that again and that's the whole idea of connection right i mean when yeah. you're performing live there's a certain kind of connection but when you're teaching it's a different kind of connection or relationship and yeah. um both of them are quite different what about for you sam how do you feel you are in your persona or who you are mm. as a performer is that very different from who you are as a coach or do you feel like it's the same thing uh right now when i think about that i, I felt like um 
about the same yeah to me yeah i just kind of act the same and um i, I would probably definitely uh like kelly said um yeah when i'm on stage yeah yeah because it's a performance um and, and um i think i'll probably be a bit more uh, uh um a, a bit more nervous that's about it other than that everything is about the same yeah you know, Sam, I, I kind of when you when you when you were going to answer that question, I was like, I bet he's going to say the same. And the reason why I'm thinking that, because, you know, I've known you for so long and I've mm -hmm. done performances with you. We've done. We've got back. Mm -hmm. And literally, you're one of the most authentic, genuine persons I've ever known. Like how you okay. are on yeah. camera is yeah, how you are. Yeah, like, the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just be the same. <laughs> talk about the same thing, same tone. You are. And, yeah. You totally are. And I, which I, you know, I love that. What is something that both of you do? enjoy doing outside of music that people might be surprised to know i feel like i know the answer to this but i really want both of you i, I mean i have okay. an idea of what your answer might be but i want you guys to share what do you do outside of music that people are like whoa i did not know sam or kj did that and you love it as well what is it um, mm. and sam i'm gonna throw that to you first okay um yeah, if people don't know, uh, I, I love combat sports. So uh, apart from doing all my music and stuff, I like to do my kickboxing stuff. So um, I have uh, um, yeah done competition in uh, uh, kickboxing. And um, yeah, that's something. Sam, yeah. Sam, I remember one time, I knew you were going to say that, right? Because that's why I was like, I, want, I hope he, yeah. he mentions that. Because one time you came into the studio, you had a black eye. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. I said, are you okay? Yeah. He's like, oh, and you're so like nonchalant. You're like, oh, yeah. no, I'm fine. <laughs> I had a competition. I was like, yeah. did, did someone beat you up? Like, what <laughs> were they mad at you? And they're like, no, no, I, I had like a fighting combat yeah. competition. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> KJ, what about you? What is something that you do outside of music that people would be surprised to know about? I will play nunchaku. No. I don't know what that oh. is. Can you uh, oh, uh, nunchucks. Yeah. No way. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, and my 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 mentor asked me to join competition as well, <laughs> to like really. Is that yeah. something and you I, learn? Is that you learn nunchaku? I learned food? I learned for a few years, and I joined the competition, and surprisingly, I get a gold prize. That's I, I never think of. Yeah. <laughs> KJ. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know wow. to see this. Okay. <laughs> Where can oh, yeah. I see this? Is this online you can somewhere? Click, yeah, yeah. You can uh, search the hashtag like KJ Nunchaku. There are some. Nunchaku. some oh, wow. Okay. Oh Nunchaku, my gosh. I'm totally yeah. going to search that up <laughs> after this interview. I, that is definitely a surprise. I did not know that at all. <laughs> Actually, at first, I want to say I will eat a lot. <laughs> But yeah, Nanjaku is something we all enjoy. Wow. Nanjaku is really stress stress out for me. Yeah. It's stress releasing? Like Nanjaku? Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah. I can yeah. imagine you're just like, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's one big goal that you both that you want to achieve in your career? What's one big goal? Uh, uh, KJ, I'm going to throw that to you first. OK. I would say I want to have another solo concert someday and release again uh, although now there are people saying like digital music uh, is more popular they sound and make it into an album but for me i i really hope i can still have that little album as a memory yeah mm. in the future so yeah that's something i wanted to do now let's make you that happen what about for you sam what is your big uh, goal what is big my big goal um i've been writing a lot of songs so i want to release uh good songs classic songs meaningful songs that um the next generation or even like when it gets to like my grandkids or something like they will still listen to like something um with a lot of meaning uh yeah so meaningful songs i want to write classic songs that will uh, uh so i can leave like a footprint yeah in my life I yeah i love how both of you are talking about in terms of creating something for memory or creating something mm. that lasts and i yes, think that's yes. something with with music and with anything with to do with the arts really you're arts, creating yeah. you're expressing yourself you're creating something that actually lasts and has a memory and has a journey has a story attached to it i think that's something that whether you are a professional singer or you're not yep. professional musician or not that is something that all of us 
I think is important for us to do in our day to day lives. That's something yeah. that's that's super meaningful. Or right, what what um. I, we've already almost gone for half an hour, and I just was like, oh my gosh, the time just flew by. I just want to, uh, before we wrap up, I want to open up and say hello to Anne Co. You did you sent a message here. I see you. If anybody has any questions, now is the time to ask. You got not one, not two, not three co vocal coaches here. So as if you want to let us ask a question, we're here for you. Um, you can type in the chat box. But in the meantime, one more question for both of you. If you had to, if you could have dinner, with any music artist, living or dead, who would it be and why? Uh, KJ, I'm gonna ask you first. <laughs> okay. Um, Did I ask you first last time? Sorry, <laughs> I don't remember. I, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, I have a lot of choice, but if-, if No, really, you're only I, one and you have to uh, define yeah, I why. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I want to have it with um, Anita Mui. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Why? That's a because, good one. of course, she is a legend in Hong Kong. And um, I want to, like, because everybody say when you communication communicate with someone, you always learn, no matter who that is. And, of course, for any time, we, I can ask a lot of, like, on stage. And I want to learn more about, like, as a performer so, or how you balance your uh on stage and on your life, balancing how you handle everything that well, and yeah, as a female artist back then. She really is truly an icon. Hey, KJ, did you know that the there's a movie of her coming out soon? Yeah. And did you know that my mom is teaching the the, the, the yeah. person that is playing I, I, Anita? I, yeah, yeah, I saw them. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I could hear her. I sometimes in the I'm in the in the studio and I can hear yeah. um, the songs and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. It sounds yeah. like her. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> it's really really cool. Very exciting. Yeah, it will be good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Sam, who yeah. would you want to have dinner with? Only one, and why? Okay, uh, tough one, but I would want to have. Um, uh, is it dinner or lunch? Or anyway, dinner. just to spend time <laughs> with. Um, I would say Wong Gako from Beyond. Oh, yeah, okay. because um, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's what got me into uh, like canto pop and also the playing the guitar. Yeah, when I was a kid, um, like I just heard his stuff. Yeah, um, on the radio. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and then I just like go oh, whoa, like I really like this guy. Like yeah, actually not on the radio, but on the CD player. Yeah, because my yeah. brother used to uh be a big fan of uh, Beyond and would just play the records and stuff. And I just overheard like some of the songs, and and I, I just felt like, whoa, that sounds so cool. And the, and then and I saw like he have like this black guitar and stuff, and he looks really cool, and he plays the guitar and sing. And so yeah, I just want to like definitely uh, ha have dinner with him, yeah, and just Amazing. to hang out. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Oh, I'm gonna show you mine. Mine is I, I I'd love to have dinner with Lady Gaga, just because oh, it's wow. Lady Gaga, and I think yeah, she would be. <laughs> an awesome person to talk to oh, yeah. <laughs> have dinner with. But, um, but it's funny though, because all three of us are talking about people who have very, very distinct styles and they're very, very, you know, they're iconic. Like Anita Mui and Wang Gaku and, you know, Lady Gaga, you, you, yeah. you say their name and you're like, oh yeah, you know? And so one final question, this is a question that, you know, we were, I was going to save till later, but I wanted to just really quickly talk about it now is what was it, what do you feel like is, what do you feel is style? Like, what makes somebody iconic? Is it an energy? Is it their talent? What? How would you define that? And that will be our our, our kind of our last question for this this session. Mm. Sam, I'm gonna put you in the spotlight here. Okay, sure, sure. Um, say say that again. You mean the character, right? What What is? How do you How do you mm. define style? Like an define artist's style. style. Do you think it's an energy? Like when you, when somebody mm, when mm. you say, "Oh, that person's iconic," or you know that the image of him, or the as as an artist, do you the, like an artist style? What do you think yeah. is about that? Like how do you how do you develop style? How do you have that style? What do you need? Is it like a an, an energy? Is it talent? You have to have raw talent. Like what is it do you, to you? Do you think? Okay. Um... Let me see. That, uh, one, that's the right? deep one. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. for me, it's about highlighting all the subtle, subtle uh, uh, details of um, your uh, your character, such as when we sing. 
um, a lot of subtle stuff. Um, try and not be. I always, I always look into this stuff. Say when people sing and stuff. Um, uh, the subtle details of um, such as a, a, a tail, like the ending of a phrase. Like don't don't have it too smooth. Like maybe other stuff like wise men say that would be really straight. Maybe you want something like why men wise men say. Says like all those like little subtle detail stuff. Let those imperfection <laughs> stuff, um, uh, s s zoom into those stuff and and expand. Let those stuff be really big, and that will become your character. I yeah, love so, that, Sam. That's really. Um, I mean, I, that's I love that, and we talk about that a lot too in training. Yeah, yeah. You know, learning vocal technique is not about having a perfect instrument and sounding yes. perfect, and every single note has to be perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. It's about having choices and zoom. I love what you said. Zoom into the details. Yes, zoom into where your details. That's where your personality will shine. That's yeah. where your unique character comes through. Oh that's yeah, so, so yeah. good, so good. KJ, what what are your thoughts? Yeah. Do you agree, or do you have a different perspective? Share. Yeah, I agree to that, and on top from that. Is even zoom inside the mind because mm. how they speak in public and how they how they um, put things on the social media it represent the character mm. not just how they selfie or how they dress up that take away all those stuff how you look at some person even there's a lot of artists they don't have a lot of social media pictures and they don't have really wow uh, a lot of uh, amazing costumes on the, them even they just have a t-shirt and a jeans you can see mm. those wow they're star that is because how they treat others how they at themselves and how they perform is or in the same line yeah you know what i mean yeah i and, totally and know what you mean yeah the, yeah no no matter there is in public or they in private they can have that aura you know <laughs> yeah i think it's so very true. elegant yeah it's not about like the showy parts that you're yeah again the same thing yeah. with technique it's not about like showing all these different yeah. things it's, right? not, about being it's, perfect. The it's not about that it's about yeah. Yeah. it's and it start. it does start with your thoughts it does start mm. with you know your self-awareness your understanding um you know d digging deep into your 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 beliefs Right. Yeah. And really understanding and accepting yourself and allowing those parts mm. of your personality mm. to come mm. through in those cracks. Right. In those um, yep. details up, right. of the voice. Yeah. I love that so much. It's so true. And Jay. Hey, Jay. Jay's here. She's one of our members. She says, agree. <laughs> 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 I love it. All right. So thank you both so much for speaking on speaking about zooming in. Right. We're going to be jumping, continuing this conversation on Zoom with our members. Thank you so much, Kelly, Jackie and Sam, for being here with us. And hey, if you are tuning in from Hong Kong right now and you want to learn from Kelly, Jackie, you want to learn from Sam privately, head on over to CSMAstudio.com. That's CSMAstudio.com. Send us a message and we will hook you up for sure. To all my Singers Connect members out there, remember we have a private Zoom session with KJ and Sam coming up right after this broadcast. We get to continue the conversation. You get to ask them personally your questions. We're going to see you on Zoom in a couple of minutes. To everyone else tuning in right now, remember, if you want five action steps that will help you rock your first solo song, whether you've never sung in front of anyone before or you're looking to nail your next vocal performance, then head over to rockyoursolo.com to download your free guide to rocking your first solo song. Big, big, big thank you again, again to my guests, Kelly, Jackie, and Sam. And to all of you watching, thank you for spending time with us today. I hope this episode inspires you to put on some great music and sing your heart out. Until next time, see you all on Zoom soon. Singers Connect members. Bye-bye, KJ, bye, Sam. Bye, everybody. Thank you so bye. much. Bye.